Hi, I'm Heather Dunaway-Smith. I'm an artist and technologist exploring immersive storytelling. And recently, I have received a ton of requests to talk about using 3D models in Adobe Aero, which is Adobe's AR software. And frankly, 3D can be pretty intimidating. Um, it's a very deep pool, but it's, it's honestly, it's not magic. Uh, it's not rocket science and it's totally swimmable, even for beginners. Like frankly, I haven't even been doing 3D that long. And uh, if I can do it, you can do it. So let's dive in. You're gonna create your 3D model in a 3D modeling application. And from there, you're gonna export it. And the two major export formats that are supported by Adobe Aero are FBX and GLB. I personally recommend GLB files. They tend to be a little bit smaller than FBX files. And there are a few other options available like OBJ. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check out the nitty gritty about supported file formats. So importing, once you've exported to either FBX or GLB. Importing is really simple. So Adobe Aero was actually designed to be a drag and drop no code AR authoring solution. And that's the simple answer is that you drag and drop your FBX or, or GLB file directly into the interface. Um, or you could select file import, or if you're like a key commander, you could hit uh, the command key plus the letter I. Now let's go ahead and talk about best practices um, when creating 3D models for Adobe Aero or really any AR software. Um, the bottom line is optimization. That's like the, um, the undocumented like pudding of, of the industry, <laughs> um, for lack of a better term. Anyway, uh, Everything needs to be optimized. The smaller your file is, um, the more efficiently that it runs, the better it's going to run on all of the software and uh, all of the phones and tablets, etc., that are going to be running these, or, you know, the glasses if you're working in that environment. So, first thing is first, make sure your poly count is nice and low. Um, the official documentation says a less than 130K for polygons in Adobe Arrow, so definitely keep it lower than that, but I would recommend going as small as you can. Think low poly, think efficient. It's really the way to go. In my experience, each uh, 3D format is interpreted a little bit differently in each authoring application. So first off, before I do any animations, I always apply scale, rotation, and position. This makes sure that your object's origin point is basically set to zero um, so that anything that you apply afterward, including keyframes, um, starts from that point. And therefore, when you import it into the 3D application or the AR application, it's going to be interpreted properly. Now let's go ahead and talk about animations. So by and large, the most efficient way to create animations for AR software, in my experience, is by using armatures. And armatures are basically just skeletons. They're a collection of bones that control various aspects of like a 3D model. And when you create animations using armatures and you export your 3D model and bring it into your AR software like Adobe Arrow, you can typically activate those animations with a single command. So you drag and drop and you select play animation in Adobe Arrow, for example. Another step that I always perform when creating animations for AR experiences is baking my animation. So each application does this a little bit differently. Um, this is how you do it in Blender underneath this pull down menu or even as an export option. But the basic gist is that it takes your individual keyframes um, that you've created and it converts every single frame to a keyframe. So there's no ambiguity about the animation that you've created. And when you import into your 3D application like Adobe Arrow, uh, it will behave properly. Materials determine the color and texture of your 3D models. Sometimes they use images, also known as textures, to achieve this. If I'm using a material that has textures, I try to minimize my file sizes by using compressed JPEGs and power of two images. Unless you need transparency or are using flat colored graphic images, I recommend using JPEGs. They can be compressed to much smaller sizes, and every byte counts when you're creating AR. Due to the way computers and graphics cards process data, it's often a good idea to use power of two images. A power of two image is one that has an aspect ratio of one to one or two to one, where the sides are either a multiple of two or eight. These are some common power of two image dimensions. I also recommend uh, using a service like TinyPNG to compress them even further. Basically, you want these things to be as small as possible. It's all about optimization. And that's it. If you found this helpful, um, please like and subscribe, um, etc. I'll be doing tutorials like this um, every other Wednesday, as well as like live sculpting sessions, etc. Basically, I'm on the interwebs, and if you would like to join me, please do. 
Um, and thanks. And if you have any questions below, be sure to leave a comment. Um, let me know what questions in particular you want me to cover about 3D in the future. Like I said, it's a deep pool, and I definitely didn't cover all of it. So uh, hopefully you got something from this, and uh, see you next time.